First Samuel chapter seven. First Samuel chapter seven. Just want to read the first six verses. That's what we'll be able to like to show. And the men of Kirjath Jerem came and fetched up the ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of Abinadab in the hill and sanctified Eleazar his son to keep the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass while the ark abode in Kirjath Jerem that the time was long, for it was twenty years. All the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If you do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods and Ashtaroth from among you, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord, and serve Him only. And He will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. And the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Ashtaroth, and serve the Lord only. And Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray for you unto the Lord. And they gathered together to Mizpah, and drew water, and poured it out before the Lord, and fasted on that day, and said there, We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mizpah. Lord, thank You so much for the opportunity tonight just to sing and enjoy the grace of God. Enjoy the friendship and the fellowship Lord, the brethren. Thank you so much for these that come and devote their time to, to try and sing and, and to, to just be a blessing. Thank you so much for that. Lord, thank you for these people that love me and put up with me. Thank you that they encourage me to sing and to preach and Lord, just to be who I am. Father, I pray that you bless them and help them. Speak to us and touch our hearts. Manifest yourself in the Word of God as we look at it tonight. Give us what we need. In Jesus' precious name, we thank you and we pray. Amen. Amen. Remember the story, I won't take a lot of time to do that, but how Israel started to fight with the Philistines. Then when they began to lose the fight, they realized that the ark of the Lord was not in their presence. And so they went and get it, and uh, they began, they continued to lose, and the fight even got worse, and they lost more. At first they lost 3,000, then they lost 30,000. We talked about how that we cannot expect to start a fight and then God to take up where we can't fix it. We can't expect to get something started and to include God in it later. We need to pray about it and know what God is doing before we do that. That's why we often get ourselves in trouble and get in a bind. If you ever do something or go somewhere and you never have an opportunity to witness to someone, it's probably because you jumped ahead of what God wanted. Most of the time that's what happens. And we look we look back at it and say, you know what, I wasted my time. If I would have just asked God to do it and let God bless it, I could have been a blessing to somebody and maybe had an opportunity to witness. I believe that everywhere we go, uh, that everything we do ought to be a witness for Christ and somehow, somewhere, God is going to give us an opportunity to witness to somebody. And so, uh, I just believe that. I believe God directs every step. The Bible said that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. That means that no matter where you go, if you're on vacation or you're going to work, or if you're going to visit someone, that God has ordered your steps and God will use you and you'll have an opportunity to be a witness for Him. I don't believe anything that God allows us to do should be wasted. And uh, so I, I believe that. And so we find the children of Israel, what they had done is <coughs> the Philistines. And uh, then they tried to get God involved in it. Well, you know, well, it, it seemed like a good thing at the time, so surely God is in it. And then when they realized that we're losing, well, let's get the ark and bring it into the camp, and surely God's going to defend us. And God didn't defend them. Actually, they wind up losing the ark, and it went into the Philistines' camp. The Bible said it, it went from city to city, five cities that they had. And uh, the, the Bible said that it, it actually became a burden unto them rather than a blessing. And so uh, in, in that factor, they wind up saying, hey, look, uh, Israel, y'all come get this thing, get it out of here. Uh, we don't know what to do with it. Y'all just take it. We're tired of having it. 
And then the Bible says here in verse number 1 of chapter 7, And the men of Kirjath Jerom, this is the city of Forest, came and fetched up the ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of Abinadab <coughs> the hill. Now, uh, the, the name of Abinadab means father of the willing giver. And they sanctified Eleazar his son to keep the ark of the Lord. Now, Eleazar means God is helper. Now, the ordinances of God will benefit all who rightly deserve them or observe them, but none who continue to neglect them. Now, what happens is they knew what they needed to do and if, if we obey what God has in His Word, if we strive to be a good Christian, God will honor that. God honors that to anybody who observes His Word. Sometimes that we're not benefited like we should be because we're not observing the Word of God like we should. But if we continue to neglect it, we certainly will not be benefited, but we'll be burdened. And it will happen in the Christian life. What, we're not doing what the Lord expects out of us. And then we look at Eleazar. Eleazar was not a Levite. Now the Levites were the only people normally that were allowed to have anything to do with the ark. If you wasn't a Levite, it was a dangerous thing to hang around that ark and especially to put your hand on it. But he was there only uh, to be set apart to be the appointed keeper of of the place where the ark was now going to be. In verse number 2, it came to pass, while the ark abode in Kirjath Jerem, that the time was long, for it was 20 years. All the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. Now, what it's saying, it's not saying that they lamented for 20 years after the ark. But what happened, remember the story as it went, they got in trouble, expected God to bail them out. And that's what happens to 90% of the people in the world. Uh, they get themselves in a bind and then, oh, well, God, I'm sorry, now bail me out. And uh, so these things happened, and, and the Bible said finally they got the ark back. But remember this, they didn't get the ark back because they repented. But they got the ark back because the Philistines just didn't want it anymore. It's like, look, we don't want this in our presence. It's messing up our lifestyle. It's causing plagues and sickness and all kind of things. Our gods are being destroyed and we don't want it. Come and take it and get it out of here. We don't care who gets it. Just get it out of here. So Israel gets it back. And the Bible says right here in verse number 2, that the time was long that the ark of old in Kirk got Jerem, it was 20 years. And then finally, the people began to lament after the Lord. They began to be sorry for what they did. See, they were still living in sin. They were still following idols. And they were still uh, Balaam and Ashtaroth. I think Ashtaroth is one of the names of one of the Smurfs or the cat or something. That's not a coincidence that that's on there, people. And, and I know the first time somebody's going to hear Brother Barry say that, oh, Brother Barry, you're just picking on a good cartoon. You're just picking on a good story. Let me tell you something. If that cartoon was just a cartoon and not really something to it, why have they turned it into a big movie that everybody wants to go see? There's something more behind the teaching of it. I don't know all the understandings of it, but I'll tell you what, nothing is put out there just to have fun with. Nothing that is going to be successful in Hollywood has anything to do to glorify God. I can promise you that. It's just not going to happen. You say, Brother Barry, what is it? I'm going to pray about it and search it, but I can guarantee you one thing, there's some people behind it. You say, are you saying we shouldn't go watch it? I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying that uh, you, you just pray about it and let the Holy Spirit tell you what you need to do. But what if I go watch it and, and something bad happens in my family? Then you're going to be the one that goes and does something and then expect God to bail you out after. I'm not saying you can't go watch it. I'm just saying you better pray about it. Just know that the Holy Spirit says it's okay. Oh, Brother Barry, you're just being mean. I'm just being honest. That's one of my traits is telling the truth. Just being honest. 
think about it. You know, our country wouldn't be in near as much trouble as it is if we wouldn't allow so many things on TV. You know, back when uh, uh, back back when I was a kid, you would get arrested and put in prison if you said the word darn on TV. <coughs> Today, you're lucky if you can find a show that just got that in. Amen? Uh, they, a lot of things. I mean, look, one of the first times that a double band was used on TV was the, uh, the, the um, uh, Dick Van Dyke show. They used to have the two beds, and then all of a sudden, one series, she wore pants and they slept in a double bed. That's when it started. I know a lot of y'all, but y'all don't remember that, but I used to watch it all the time. I remember reading and seeing something about that the first time that that happened on TV. I remember them talking about it. Uh, you know, we, we look at these things and see, you know, when there used to be a standard that said, look, you, you can't cross this. It's not going to happen. But then people would push it and cross it and they would get away with it, so the next one would want to go a little farther. And that's what happened. 